ladies and gentlemen, he is here. <laughs> Sergeant <laughs> Keshi Benef Mabunda of Rosemary's Hitler's fame. That's why, that's why he's famous. But the reason he's here is because he is very, very good at his job. Rosemary in Global. No, Mia, Rosemary in Global. Serial murderer. Serial killer. Former police officer, cop turned killer. Rosemary was one of us, but she was dangerous. How do you catch a serial killer? Sergeant Keshi Beneth Mabunda, the detective behind the arrest of serial killer Rosemary Ndlovu. Sergeant Keshi Mabunda was rewarded for his efforts. Awarded the Detective of the Year accolade at the SAPS National Excellence Awards. And this is why he is here. You South African Police Services Detective and Forensic Services Employee of the Year. What? Sergeant, I can't tell you how excited Anela has been to have you here <laughs> all morning. She's been out of her skin from the minute she walked in at six. Yeah. I was like, Sergeant, my wound is coming in. And then, you know what's nice? As he walked in, Sergeant, like a typical cop, he didn't say Sergeant, he said Mabunda. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah? how you catch That's them. That's how you huh? say it, Mabunda yeah. here. Last yeah. name basis. Listen, I, I was just asking you, has your life changed since you've been on that documentary, Rosemary's Hitless? Like people recognize you in the street? Yeah, they recognize me a lot. I... I'm famous now. <laughs> <laughs> this is great news. Away. No, we, you look familiar. I just said, no, you don't know me. You don't know me. Yeah. I, I have that face. Yeah. I look familiar. <laughs> People think that. And your and your family, do, do they now take you seriously? Like, okay, dad, uncle, husband. It's a real job now if he's cracking mm. cases like this. Yeah, the family is very much impressed. Even the place I come from. Mm. Yeah, they're very much happy about my work, about me, uh. putting them on the map. So it's good. Where do you come from? I come from Kiani. Kiani. At the uh, Ngobe village. Oh, in the oh, rural area. Yeah, so the entire Kiani the entire, now, they're like, uh, yeah. Ma Mamuna, oh wait. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm just like so blown away because, I mean, you'll admit as well, as a police officer in the South African Police Services, is that you guys do not get the credit you deserve all the time. Uh, when it's time to talk about cops in this country, we choose to be negative all the time. So when we can actually see your thought process in that, like, there are brains, there are proper brains in the South African police service, and here they are, Boma Bunda, right? Yeah. So how long have you been a cop? Um, it's 19 years, Okay. but being a detective is for, uh, for 18 years. So oh. I have a vast experience in that uh, department. Oh, wow. so you were a cop for one year and they said this one must be a detective? Yeah, I was recruited by uh, another guy. Just identify me from the people who came I came with from yeah. the college. Oh. He said, I want you to be a detective. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So do you, do you, is, is it like inherent in you? Ooh, like you've just got a nose for Irabi. She's like, mm -mm. <laughs> something is off here. Yeah, I have a good mentor. He was good for me. Oh. He taught me everything. Then I, but it's normal in police now. But I'm, just carrying forward where he left okay. me. Okay. Yeah. So you had a good mentor who taught you everything. What's the first thing he taught you? Like, let's say you walk into a room and something wrong has happened in that room. What's the first thing you will look at? <laughs> yeah, he wanted me to tell you about what. <laughs> no, no, he's not going to reveal his secrets. Okay. Then, so then then the, in public. <laughs> no. Okay, give me, don't, just one of like, oh man. Uh, yeah, you can't tell much. No, can you must you? give us, I mean, one thing that, just one that thing. helps you. Were you like, eh, eh, why is this thing like that? It's about, you don't have to take things for granted. Even mm. if you get a cigarette butt, that thing got evidence value. Mm. So everything, you must make sure that whatever you get, you don't a take it seriously. <laughs> oh, okay. Speaking of stars, we're speaking to one of the South African stars of the South African Police Services. Uh, he is Sergeant Mabunda, one of the vocal and key points in the Rosemary Tlovo case, which is still happening. She's still not been sentenced. He is the best detective in the country. Dude. Don't don't just quickly move over this. Okay. The best detective award given. In the country. And he is here. Rosemary in Global. No, Mia. Rosemary in Global. Serial murderer. Serial killer. Former police officer. Cop turned killer. Rosemary was one of us, but she was dangerous. How do you catch a serial killer? Sergeant Keshi Beneth Mabunda, the detective behind the arrest of serial killer Rosemary Ndlovu. Sergeant Keshi Mabunda was rewarded for his efforts. Awarded the Detective of the Year accolade at the SAPS National Excellence Awards. So, so Mabunda, the writer, was it easier for you to catch Rosemary because she was also a cop and you're a cop so you know how she thinks? It was not easy at all. Mm. Within, it took me three years to arrest her. 
you. Mm. So it <laughs> need a lot of work to do oh. in order to connect the doors. So that when the court, uh, the case is placed on the court roll, it mustn't be struck off the roll mm. or have delays. It must be concrete. Like other cases, so just oh. have to show straight. And, okay, and was there a point when you felt, I, this is this is far-fetched, this can't be true. I Maybe I'm the one seeing things here. There's nothing here. The, the worst thing is whereby you, you, I will take a month without even touching the docket. Oh. Because it was frustrating. And then what would happen for you to take you back to the docket after a well, month? Was, we do have inspections. Uh-huh. I know this day, on this day when I have inspection, I have to go back to the docket. If I do something, at least they will see that I'm, it's moving. Mm. But I was getting information time and again because I was like, uh, this, this company, sorry about I'm not advising the mm. insurance company, bureau. it helped me a lot. Okay, to, so it was to, the insurance company coming to the party. Coming that, to the yes, party. Then, uh, and giving then. you that information and those cell phone documents, cell phone records. No, the records, no. They don't, give you, they don't give you cell phone records? Uh, no, I, I've started that department, that one. I have to get it to the um, network, uh, network providers like Vodacom, CLC, MTN, oh. all of those. There I have to get information of them. Insurances uh. period. I want. I want to ask, like, how long? I mean, uh, when was the first time that you started thinking mm. something is wrong? Because obviously, you sort of looked at it and went, something's not right here. But but that was must have been early on. Yeah, it was. Um, the deceased, uh, the, the Helava, mm. Morris, was killed uh, the previous day. Ah. Uh, well, the second day she came with a bunch of insurance policies. The case was not mine initially. Uh, uh. It was done by my colleague. As, but we, yes, you kept on saying your colleague was next door. Was next, next door. So I could see what's happening. Mm. So after she left, this officer said, Chief, no. What were you signing? Don't so, just sign documents. What are, is, we, yeah, what are you signing? Then he said, oh, it's just policies. For but I said, no, okay. Call her back to the office. Make copies of those documents. Uh. Find the docket. He called him back. She came back to the office. Filed everything. Then I went to him. From today, I'm taking over this case. Mm. I'll do it myself. And what did he because say? I was, no, he could, he could, no, I was a senior. So he couldn't, okay. <laughs> he, couldn't, okay. Okay. <laughs> he couldn't deny it. Then I took over from there. I said, no, something's strong here. Mm. So I called him for insurance, all the insurance policies. Oh. Then I spoke to one of the guys. I said, no, what? this person claimed a policy at 2012, 2013. And these people... They, Every they year she's claiming a policy. Yes, it was only in 2014. From 2012, she was killing, 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 killing. Then I, I said, no, these people, there's no way that she... It's not that, a coincidence. It, coincidence. And when he goes back, you could see that uh, the inception date of the insurance is, mm. is not five, six months after they... It, 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 after they get the insurance yeah. uh, official, then they die. Then they die. Mm. <laughs> that, can't, <laughs> that can't be right. But also, okay, because one of the other ladies was saying, I, I think she's actually... Um, She's a prosecutor on the documentary with the with the maroonish hair. Ariana. She was saying that yes, I yes. She was saying that it's you don't find women serial killers. It's just unheard of, right? And are we calling her that? Are we calling Rosemary a serial killer? Yeah, she's a serial killer. She is a serial killer. Because uh. she, if you kill more than, because I don't believe it's more than it's more than it's more than eight people. It's eight? just that I couldn't prove the other rest. Oh. <laughs> yes. I couldn't prove the rest, so Jeez. I only went on the what I can prove. How many did you prove? I proved six. <laughs> That's a serial <laughs> killer. <laughs> There's a lot of cases that uh, she claimed before. Mm-hmm. And when I checked those cases, the way people are dying, they were like mysterious. They can't believe what the person is fine today, tomorrow is dead. The dockets was literally lying at several police stations open, gathering dust. Nobody was held responsible. No, there was no evidence. There was no movement in the dockets. You know, when Babunda came, he had to resuscitate all the brush, all those files, dust, and start piecing them together. She never stopped killing until 2018. Every year she was killing a person. Okay, so she is a cop. You are a cop. You have taken this case from your junior, right? Now it's with you. Are you not scared that inside the police station she's working with somebody else and your life could be in danger? Um, <laughs> there was time whereby I informed the uh, insurance companies to red flag their ID, so she mustn't, she mustn't uh, claim uh, or get the uh, oh. the insurance. Then one company and the, that lady just uh, texted me on my way here. 
she informed her that, you know what, I'm not going to pay you because Mabunda said we mustn't pay you. Oh, they gave her a name. They said Mabunda said we mustn't she pay you. She knew that I'm now investigating because immediately I signed the case on the, on the system. Oh. Clicks, the word, and she can be able to check. On because the she's system. a cop. She's a cop. Then, after she got that information, she came back to, to meet my office. She was furious, very angry. Why are you telling people not to pay me? I said, no, I can't do that. Who's, those, who's that person? Who said that? She said, she gave me the number. I dialed that number on my le- on my uh, desktop uh, landline. Phone, landline. Yeah. yeah. She picked up the phone, this person. I asked her, why don't you pay Rosemary? <laughs> because you, you, it's her money. Mm. She said, no. We didn't. She said, you guys tell her that it's me. It's not me. She was, I said that in front of her. Oh. She was happy. She went out of the office. Style. After that, then I made her die. I said to her, please, now, call her again that you made the mistakes. not my bonda, but uh, it's us who are busy doing our investigation. Oh. She called her. I immediately changed the docket not to be on my name oh. and gave it to another cop who's waiting inside of the police station. Oh. So she, now I'm, I'm no more in the picture. I'm now, I'll do my work. She doesn't know that I'm, I'm the one. That you're still wheeling and dealing behind. I'm still, I'm having the docket, but on, it's not on my name. Okay. Yes, yeah, someone else. You have to, I mean, what you have to go through, because obviously now you're working in the same station, mm. so now what you have to go through to hide that you're investigating one of your, your own, you Fortun- Fortunately, she was not working at the same station. Okay. She was not in that vicinity, staying uh. at the vicinity where I'm stationed at. Uh. So. <laughs> Did she ever speak to you? Because I'm pretty sure you, you, you guys, you interrogated her and you, like, you know she's there and you're trying to get information out of her. Did she ever speak to you and ever admit it to it? Or it was it all on you having to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt that she killed her relatives? After I arrest, uh, I was informed that she'd been arrested. I was, aware that, I was aware that they were going to arrest her mm. on that entrapment. Mm. Then the following day, they informed me. I went to see her at the, at the police cells to get to, to one of the rooms in Tembis. And she told me that, you know what? They told me that they're going to arrest me. I said, who? Mm. And she said, wherever I'm going. That <laughs> I'm not sure that she was consulting the mm. prophets, but it's what she, she told me. Then I started to interrogate her with all murder by murder from 2012 mm. until... Uh, murder by murder. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear that phrase. Crazy. Murder by murder. Yeah. Okay. So until I connected with all the cases. Mm. Fortunately, I was done with investigation. Uh, from in 2018. From that day, I managed to get about three medals, like in Littleton, in Kempton Park, and in Bushback Ridge. Uh. After those ones that I was busy with, then it was there. I had a short space of time to investigate because she's arrested. She's got the right to a speedy trial. Yes. Mm. Then I have to run there. It was not easy for me for the past time. From 2018 to 2020, mm. I was always on the road. Finding, finding finding more information, interrogating people. Driving and all over the country. Gathering information. Yes. And, okay, because we must let you go. Do you, during this time that you were investigating, and it's, it's a few years, right, did you start dreaming about the case? No. <laughs> Just that it brings a lot of stress. Like when the, court, the case is in court, mm. you have to make sure you speed up the, the investigation so that uh, they mustn't throw your case out. Mm. Okay, and just it, it, to wrap, to, talk to me about the South African Police Service because, like I said in the beginning, that you guys do get a lot, of, a lot of bad media. If you do something wrong, it's all over the papers. If you do something right, we keep quiet. Talk to me about being a policeman in South Africa. Like, why, why are you that? Why do you love it? And why, wh- why would you like for us to o- also cast a kind eye when we when we talk about you guys? <laughs> no, it's a good question. <laughs> difficult to answer. Uh, so no. modest. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because you so can modest. say because I'm good at because, my job. Uh, yeah, you, you, you know, you have to be dedicated. Mm. It's your passion. Uh, no, you can't get applause in every case. True. Yeah, so you, 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 but whatever you get, must treat it in every case like the complainant is your relative. Mm. Mm. Respect your complainant. Oh, then yeah. you'll see that you give them feedback. Mm. Liars with them. If you can't find it, you can't find anything. But what can I say? Look, I just want to say, if ever I do have a case that, and like you say, the complainant, and you, you treat them like they're your relative, I really wish that, okay, the entire country can't get you, Mabunda, on the case. But mm. I really wish that every, every cop that we come across, 
has a mabunda ism in them. They are like you. <laughs> Doesn't have to be you, but I'd like them to be like you because the yeah. way you did not let go of that case, you, not knowing it's gonna make papers, not knowing you're gonna end up in a show mix documentary, you were just doing it because you were doing your job. Exactly. That that is commendable. And I, we have applause. to give you a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Sergeant, is it it's Sergeant, ne? Yes. Okay, because I don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> I know. Now. Hey, I know. hey, Sergeant Mabunda, the documentary is on Showmax. It's called Rosemary's Hitless. A lot of people have been watching it. I hope after this conversation with the man yeah. that clinched the case for us, you'll go and you'll watch it and just when you watch it and now you you play the interview back in your head, you're going to be like, yeah, man, this yeah, guy, this guy, man, this guy. Thank you, Mabunda. Thank you very much. Anele and the club on 947.